All right, so let's go ahead and begin. I decided to make another video on simple linear regression because that was kind of dry. And I think that we can make this a little bit more fun. And here we go. So we have Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, and we have their first year in the NBA. And so what we would want to do is see how minutes played has an impact or can it predict the points that they scored. Okay, so in this actual data, I'm not going to specify the actual players. I'm just going to look at their minutes played and then their their actual points. Okay, the points scored. All right, so with that being said, let's look at the SSVA. So summary statistics, this is the mean of the X, okay? What do you think the X variable will be? Minutes played. Minutes played will be the X, and then the mean for Y, therefore Y, which is the response, is going to be the point scored. Okay, so we have the standard deviation for X, standard deviation for Y, and then finally our correlation. Okay, our correlation is going to be R. As you can see, R is positive. R is positive. So therefore, based on the previous video, we know that the slope has to be positive. Okay, so then this, we can look at the visualization. I'm going to make this centered. I get centered. Wow, that's not correct. <laughs> so this is the visualization. Minutes played on the x-axis, points scored on the y. As you can see, it's a positive relationship. There's something going on here. If we decide to do this, go a little bit deeper, something else is going on in the entire graph. But um, there's something going on here. But at the end of the day, there's a positive linear relationship between x and y. x and y. Okay. Um, in terms of our analysis, remember, we're going to ignore this. Okay. This is going to be my y-intercept. This is going to be my slope. This is my standard error for my statistics. These are my test statistic, my test statistics. And these are my corresponding p-values. Okay. And so from there, we know that this is my r squared and this is my, where is it? Seven is my standard deviation of residuals. It's because of rounding. It's probably not really seven. But um, it's probably there's decimals there, I assume. Um, so that is that. So let's answer some questions, okay? So the I'm gonna put this in red, okay? So response variable is going to be what do we say earlier? Points scored, right? Which is going to be quantitative, quantitative. Um, and then the explanatory variable variable is going to be what minutes played, which is also quantitative. Okay. Any okay? I should say any questions because I'm going slow. All right. So describe how the y-intercept can be calculated. Y-intercept and slope can be calculated in linear regression. So remember from yesterday. Let me move my mic right here. This is fine. I'm pretty sure you can still hear me. Um, let's do it like this. So hmm, this chord. Okay. Am I still seeing? Yeah. Oh. All right, I don't know why it's doing that. All right, I don't know if it's still changing, but it's fine. So when it comes to my liners, oh, you have to find slope first. So slope is found by this following equation, which involves the correlation. So this is going to be slope. And that's going to be the following equation r times the ratio of my standard deviation of my of my response variable and then of my explanatory variable okay and this is what b1 is equal to b1 all right, whereas my y-intercept, y-intercept, okay, is going to be equal to, or is found by looking at y-bar 
minus b mm, one times x bar. And this equation find, minimizes the distance between each point and the regression line. Each point and the regression line. Okay. All right, so let's actually work some magic. I'm going to do a copy and paste game just so I can work with these numbers a lot faster. You all have calculators, so therefore you can confirm these actual numbers. Um, the mic is in my way again. Okay, here we go. So, you know what? I'm actually going to pull out the label as well. And I'm a millennial with this technology, huh? So I'm going to take these numbers, okay? At least the labels of them, just so I can see what they are, okay? And then do some calculations. So with this being the case, this is, oh, well, we can, <laughs> this is going to be 0 0.789 um, times the ratio of, so 11.4 divided by 12.7. And based off of, you already have the answer. I, I was like, oh, you have your calculators, but you can confirm that it's going to be this, okay? 0 0.705, okay? That's how they got that value, 0 0.705. Whereas for this, this is found by taking 19.4, Minus 0 0.705, probably with more decimals, and this times x bar 31.7, and of course it's going to be a negative number, which gives us this particular value, negative 2.90. Negative 2.901, was it? Okay, that's... Okay. Okay, it's fine. All right, so that's that. Um, okay, it's good. It's good. So then from there, it says provide an interpretation. Okay, of the y intercept and slope. So let's do the slope first. And how we would do this is to say as the explanatory variable minutes played minutes. It's nice, but minutes played. <laughs> increases, it's always going to increase by one unit, so you can say one minute, okay, in this context, one minute, the um, points scores increases, and it's increasing because the slope is positive, increases by 0 0.07, remember this, on average, don't get caught up, on average, okay? And then, which makes sense. So then you can also say for the y, not also say, but for interpreting the y-intercept, you would say as, not as, when the minutes played is equal to zero, the points Scored, 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 scored is um, negative 2.901, right? On average, on average, remember that. But this is uninterpretable. You have to say this. But this is uninterpretable. Interpretable. I'm going to butcher it. Um, because you cannot have negative points scored. Um, okay. You can have a zero as your, um, as your minutes played. You're not in the game. But just because you're not in the game doesn't mean you're going to take away points from me. That's brutal. All right. So let's make this red and bold. Okay, hopefully everyone is following along in this video, right? It's a little slower, a little calmer. We're, we're processing this. Okay, we got this. All right, so let's go to number four. 
Let's make a prediction when minutes played is equal to 30. So I'm going to do a couple questions that are not here. I'm going to do this one first, and then I'm going to show you when it breaks. Because before we make a prediction, right, we have to check if we have data near 30 minutes. And look, 30 minutes, we do. We do our maximum minutes played and our minimum minutes played includes our, we find 30 minutes within those two values. So we're good. So we can make that prediction. Okay. Um, so come to find out, we could have, I don't know, I didn't actually do this earlier, but we can write out this equation. If I actually write out the model, it will look something like this hat y i is equal to um, negative 2.901 plus 0 0.705 times ah, times x i. Okay, so that's the regression model. Remember I said in the previous video, there are a lot of ways of saying the same exact thing. That's the regression model. But then I, this is what I would use to make that prediction. Uh, apologies for overseeing that. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll just plug in 30 into this. And I didn't do this in R. I didn't do this in my calculator already. So um, you'll see me do it. Give me a second. So when I plug this into R, I get 18.249. So that's what the actual answer would be. And then we'll say 18.249. And how we would interpret this is in the following manner. When the minutes played is equal to 30, 30, the points scored will be 18.249 again on, I'm moving myself, on average. Okay, so take note of that. All right, let's keep on going. So what we can do is to test if there is a linear relationship between uh, minutes played and score. Um, we can set up a hypothesis test. So I know we see it, but we need to confirm it with regards to um, a hypothesis test. And so what we'll do is we'll state the null in words. Wow. Okay. State the null in words. The population um, parameter. It, I could be more specific here. I could say regression coefficient. I'm going to say the population regression coefficient. Sorry. Regression coefficient. Coefficient for the linear relationship between minutes played and points scored. is zero. Or you can see that there is no linear relationship. I can even just say there is no linear relationship between minutes played and points scored. In terms of symbols, okay, we have the following. And all that is is that we use beta. One is equal to zero. For the alternative hypothesis, it's the same exact thing. I'm gonna play the copy and paste game. I know, I know, I know. All I have to do is say it's that I'm looking at alternative, okay? You could use HA if you want to, is not equal to zero, okay? And it's just not equal to zero, okay? That's it. Oh, there's no linear relationship. Not that, not that there's no relationship, but just no linear relationship. All right. And so I know this question doesn't ask this, um, but we can we can provide the test statistic. The test statistic is given to us, but it's also calculated as well. Wow, where did it go? Uh oh, did I delete it? 
Oh no, it's right here. Ha 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 ha. It's 19.496. Someone may be asking why, why would we, why are we, why are we not testing the wider set? Because we don't really, in the simple regression, more so interested in, in the slope. So here, it's 19.496. That's our test statistic and how it's found is by taking 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.03. Okay, let me see if I can remember all those numbers. So my test statistic is going to be equal to, I'm just gonna erase this and do it like this. Okay, my TS is equal to 0 0.0, no, 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.03, which gives us 19, 19 point something, whatever it was in the R, R output. That's my test statistic, which gives me, a p-value that's less than two times 10 to the negative 16. I know how R gives it, it's kind of strange, but that's what it's saying. So this p-value is extremely small, indicating that we have extremely um, strong evidence against the null hypothesis. So we should reject the null hypothesis. Okay, we should reject it, reject this claim. All right, so last but not least, if I were to actually create a 95% confidence interval, I know I didn't say it, but let's say if it's a 95%, calculate the 95% confidence interval, okay? How you would do this, and I did it in the last video, but I did it fast, is to specify our point estimate. Our point estimate in this case is always going to be our B1, our statistic. So B1, is our point estimate, which is equal to 0 0.7, which is just a slope. Okay, is 0 0.7, I want to be a little more exact here, 0 0.75. All right, since it's a 95% confidence interval, we know that our critical value, our critical value is going to be 1.96. And then our standard error is given to us. Our standard error is given to us in the R output as 0 0.03, 0 0.03617. Now I want to fix that. <laughs> okay. Okay. One seven, and then in terms to find our lower bound, and upper bound, our lower bound is equal to our point estimate minus our critical value times our s our standard error. So we already have all the numbers for this. Same thing with regards to our upper bound. Okay. However, it's now plus. So I'm going to find the numbers and I'm going to. So here you see that my lower bound is 0 0.63. My upper bound is 0 0.775, right? And so with that being the case, I know, now nah, I know, but since zero, it's important here. Since zero is now within the lower bound and upper bound, based on the data, we can claim that there is a linear relationship based on the data because zero is not included. What does zero imply? Zero implies that there's no linear relationship, okay? So this result agrees with our hypothesis test. This result agrees with our hypothesis test. So this was 0 0.63. I think this is 0 0.77, which makes sense, yeah, 0 0.77. Okay, so how would we interpret this value? We are 95% confident that the population regression coefficient between minutes played and points scored is between 0 0.63 and 0 0.77. Okay. Um, 
I said what the implications regarding zero, okay? If zero were to be between the LB and UB, it is plausible, it doesn't have to be guaranteed, but it's plausible that their is no linear relationship between x and y just <laughs> because of time i can just copy and paste it a minute played and point scored okay i know it's a little up on time hopefully this went a little bit better than previous videos well, one of the things I just want to emphasize, because this is not one of the questions, but um, the seven is going to be my standard deviation of residuals, S E, lowercase s, E, okay, and that's going to be seven in my standard deviation, my R squared, is going to be equal to 0 0.623, which is generally just correlation squared. Okay, these two metrics tells us how well the model performed. This tells us what's left unexplained, the amount. This tells us the proportion of variability, the proportion, not amount, the proportion of variability explained. Unexplained, explained. Unexplained, explained. Okay. Okay, well, that's all, folks. Hopefully, this video went better. Let me know in the comments below. I'll get to see them anyway, so.